Reverend Garner has been recognised with a Member of the Order of Australia Honour for his significant service with the homeless and the socially disadvantaged. Reverend Garner takes time out to speak to us about the differences between corporate and the not-for-profit space, as well as the significance of community. What gave me the excitement was here was a role that, that I knew that if I took it on and, and made a good fist of it, we could actually change people's lives. We do it individually, but I think we can do it for communities as well. So I, that was the most exciting thing about it compared to maybe some other people of your peers? What, what sort of contribution do you bring? Uh, what I think I bring is some clear values into the role before I even adopt any of the organisational values. Right, right. So there was a fit there in, in that sense. Um, I think I bring to it um, the, the maturity of having done a number of years before. As you know, I'm now 21. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that's, that's been important to me over the years to, to develop that relationship with people and community. And for me, community means everybody. And it means especially the poor, the marginalised, the disenfranchised, yep. those people who, who are maybe, I, we call them here, most in need. Okay. In other words, if, if we didn't do something for them, life would cave in. What do you see as the Wesley Mission's core uh, benefit or, or contribution that it gives to society? I think the work with families and the breakdown of families has been very, very significant to us. And Lifeline, of course, began here at of Wesley course, Mission. Um, and from that has, has spawned a number of other things like Life Force, suicide prevention work. And how do you track the success of that? Well, we have to find uh, key indicators about whether we're getting it right or not, and that's something that over the last few years we've particularly, at a board level, been considering very carefully. It's probably one of the only things in this business that makes me angry, really, is when people see our sector as though it's a weak sector. In point of fact, it's a complex sector. And I think that, that, that we have to find ways in which we really are able to identify whether we're changing lives or not. And that's very, very different. One area is strategy. I think that's a critical area of, of a CEO's role. And the other is to do with risk. And if I get those two things right, then in a business sense, I'm, I'm right. Secondly, I, I think I'd also say I don't see my job as to fix things. I think one of the dangers in any, any leadership, whether it's a CEO, manager, general manager, or even executive manager, is to dive in doing things that you shouldn't be doing, is to empower the organisation to, to find the resources and the, the will to actually grow and develop. Culture's always a, a significant thing. It has to come from the top, from the board. I mean, this is not just a, a one-man show here. The board has to display that culture. I have to recognise, I mean, I don't pay the highest wages. We can't pay the highest wages on the block. So people that come to work here are often making a sacrifice yeah. when they come. Now, I think there is a capacity for sacrifice if you believe in what you're doing. Now, we, we've not really worked that out scientifically, but I think some people can earn 10 and 15 percent lower than they'll earn at other places, and they can live with that, providing they believe in what they're doing. I remember going to a, a meeting, I, I shan't say who the politician was, who said, you guys could learn a lot, you know, from the corporate sector. And um, I wonder which sector he was talking about. Was it the bankrupt sector? Was it, was, it the, was it the sectors that have been known for corruption? What sort of sector is he talking about? I don't think any sector is easy. So the language that we use is not essentially any different. Um, but the people that we focus on are our, our business. We're not making widgets, mm. but we are trying to lift somebody out of poverty into a new place. That's very difficult to do. On an annual basis, what would you consider success looking like? I think success for us is actually getting through a year and continuing <laughs> to, 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 to minister on mission in the, the difficult areas that we do. What I would say is that the kind of people historically that Wesley Mission has related to have not been wealthy people. We, we do have some people who give us thousands of dollars a year, that is true. Yep. But the mass majority of people, and this goes back in Methodist history really, many of them were the, um, the artisans, the people who were uh, people have done well, but they start from a very low base. I think they're traditionally our people. So I have to work very carefully at finding the, the touch points at which anybody can give, whether it's a, 
uh, $50, $100, $1,000, or $10,000 mm -hmm. to find out what, what is it that we can reach. And, we, and that's our constant challenge. So how do you deal with that through the marketing of dealing with stigmas and the sensitivities around them? The st nearly everything that we do has stigmas attached to it. And we have to understand that. I think softening people's attitudes mm. to these things is what is our mission. It's got nothing to do with money, mm. but I think it is a very important thing that we're going to try and do yeah. if we're going to be serious about that. I, I would say to people, don't judge what you give on on a return to you mm. and and don't see um, charities and and not for profits as uh, doing something instead of you I would look for those opportunities that exist and they do in all our organizations my volunteer departments a key area mm. say are there places in which I could not only give but get engaged and involved uh, uh, to make a difference and I'd be encouraging people to do that fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate Pleasure. It.